Hey coders and welcome to episode one of our Drive Service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this video we're going to be exploring a concept called iterators. So iterators are actually not unique to the Drive Service or Apps Script at large. It's actually quite widespread across multiple programming languages including Python, Java, and C++. However, Apps Script uses it quite extensively within the Drive server, so I decided to make an entire video explaining the topic. Alright, so what are iterators? Well, if you know what JavaScript arrays are, they are, they are somewhat similar in, in the fact that you can iterate through different objects or different, um, dif different things in, say, a collection. However, the difference between iterators and arrays are arrays get all of the information inside one container, right? So they go and they gather all that information and they store it all within one container for easy access. And that is perfect. That is awesome. But, but iterators, they don't get all of the information. So they only get, say, a reference to all of the information. And then you have to um, get that information on demand. So it's on demand retrieval. So if you, say, have an iterator, um, and you have an iterable, say, of a lot of, of a large collection of items, uh, it wouldn't be storing that entire collection of items within memory. It, you would only be getting those items one by one on demand. So let me just uh, read to you this quote by uh, Mozilla. It's on their uh, developer documentation. It says, while it is easy to imagine that all iterators could be expressed as arrays, this is not true. Arrays must be allocated in their entirety, but iterators are consumed only as necessary. Because of this, iterators can express sequences of unlimited size, such as the range of integers from zero to infinity. So that last sentence right there captures the use case of iterators. Because iterators don't gather all of the information and store it in memory all at once, then you can have a incredibly large um, collection of items that you don't have to store in app memory, you just get it one by one. And this is why Drive App utilizes it. It's because you can store tons and tons of files within Google Drive. And if you wanted to get all of those files all at once, that would be infeasible. So instead of getting, instead of getting it all within an array, we get it in something called an iterable, and then we use an iterator to iterate through that. So we're gonna see an example of this in the code, and I think that will make a little bit more sense. But first, let's look at our methods for today. So we have three methods for today. Uh, the first one being next, the next one being has next, and then finally we have get continuation token. So let's take an example of all of these three methods in the code right now. My hope for you is that once you see these methods in action, the whole concept of iterators will become a lot more clear to you and you'll become an expert in it. So first let's go into our Google Drive and check out the UI. So here it is currently. You can see that we have our storage over here on the left. We're only using 20.8 megabytes of the 15 gigabytes available to us. We can always buy more, but again, like I just said, we're only using a fraction of our uh, gigabytes or our storage available to us. So we don't need to do that anytime soon. All right, so here we go. Here are all of our folders and files. Again, there are sheets files, there are image files, forms, PDFs, uh, docs, a lot of different file types. But again, I'm only using a couple of them. You can upload a lot more, including audio files, uh, Apple files, and um, Microsoft files, a lot of different types of files. All right, so here we go. We have two different folders, right? We have the example folder, and then we also have a folder called My Form File Responses, which, were, which was actually created for us in the last playlist on forms. We can actually, if we go in one step deeper, we can actually see that there is a folder, there is a folder embedded within the apparent folder My Form File Responses. So we have three different folders on our Google Drive currently. Let's say that we want to get access to all of those folders within the code editor right here. Well, the way to do that is to first access a Drive app, and then you would use a method called get folders. And I want you to pay particular attention to the return type. It is not an array of folders, but rather a folder iterator. And these two behave differently. So if we say get folders, uh, again, now we have access to the folder iterator, 
And the way to get folders from that folder iterator is not to use a array notation like this. This is not going to work at all. Uh, the way to do it is actually to call a method on it called dot next. And as you can see, this returns a folder. So this is the only way to do it. It's just to call the method dot next. All right, so what this method is going to do is it's going to say, all right, we have this folder iterator. Let me get the next file or the next folder within that folder iterator. Since we're just calling this once, it's actually going to get us the first folder within the file, within the folder iterator, but that is okay. So we now have the folder. Let me just tag on a method called get name, just that when we log or log this, it will, uh, it will have a more um, user-friendly information. All right, so I'm going to run it now. And as you can see, there were no errors. That's really good news. So let's go now into our logs. And here we go. So here is the example folder. That's the name of the first folder within our Google Drive. So everything is working properly. So that's pretty cool. But let's say that we wanted to get another folder. Let's say that we wanted to get this. Please upload a profile picture clearly showing your face folder. Well, the way to do that is to first we need to create a constant or, or we need to create a variable. And it needs to be this right here, our folder iterator. So I'm going to call this uh, constant folder iterator. All right, pretty good. Now let me just comment or let me just copy this, and I'm going to paste that right there. So now that we have our folder iterator stored within a variable or a constant called folder iterator, and we're calling the dot next method on it, what the the great thing about iterators is, is that it actually saves the state throughout the uh, execution of the code. So what that means is that if we copy this line of code right here and then we call it again, then what it's going to do is when it reaches a, a line three, it's going to call the dot next method on the folder iterator. And we've already saw what that does. It's going to return for us the first folder within the folder iterator. But then if we call dot next again on that same folder iterator, it's going to return for us the very next folder in the folder iterator. So it's not going to get us the first folder anymore. It's going to now get us the second folder. And if we call it again, then it's going to get us the third folder in the third, the third folder within the folder iterator. So let me just showcase this if I save it and I run it. Then if we go into our logs now, we may have to wait a bit for the logs to show up as per usual. But here we go. So we have the first folder in our folder iterator. Uh, it was called example folder. And then the next one is the please upload a profile picture. And then the very last one is my form. And again, this is tremendously helpful, helpful going one by one, because again, if we had say a million folders in our Google Drive, again, I don't know how, how that would happen, but let's just say that we did. We had a million folders, then storing all of those folders in one gigantic array is not going to be feasible. That's just gonna be way too much memory for a single array object. So what we do is we just say, all right, give me the folders one by one and only load them on demand. So that's pretty cool. So let's say that we actually accidentally call this one more time, right? If we hit save and we hit run, then this is what happens. We actually get an exception that says, cannot retrieve the next object. Iterator has reached the end. And why is that? It's because, again, we only have three folders within our Google Drive. So if we call the dot next method uh, and we try to get the next folder, there are none, right? So that's going to raise an exception. So how can we mitigate this? Well, there's actually a method to mitigate this, and that is going to be our next method. So let's say we have a while loop and we're actually going to uh, do this same exact procedure within a while loop. And we'll, we're just going to say, all right, while, uh, and then we're going to say logger.log, and then we're going to get the name of all of the different folders within our folder iterator. So how can we say, all right, stop when there are no more folders within our folder iterator? Well, the way to do that is to say folder iterator. Again, this is our, our uh, constant that we just find up here. We'll say folder iterator and then we'll use the method dot has next and this is going to be a method that returns a boolean 
if there are more folders within the folder iterator, it's going to return true. And if, there, if we have reached the end of our folder iterator, it's going to return false. So now if I hit the save button and I hit the run button, then as you can see, we have no more errors at all. And if we go and view our logs, then as you can see, we got the same result. We got these three different folders. So that is the method dot has next, which comes in a lot of, uh, or it comes, it, it is very helpful while we are doing like while loops and for loops and stuff like that. All right, so I'm going to showcase just one more method for today, and that is uh, the that is the git continuation token. So uh, why would you want to do this? Well, I'm going to be completely honest. I don't actually use this method a whole lot, um, but I'm sure there are use cases for it. Anyways, what this is going to return is um, let's say that we have uh, this statement right here. So we have logger log, and we are. Um, we're actually just calling the next method on the folder iterator. So uh, let's say that we stop the execution of the code uh, on line eight, right? But we are saving the continuation token. Um, we are saving the continuation token of our folder iterator. So what this means is, and again, we can save this anywhere. We can save it maybe in the properties service if we'd like, and then we could save it say in script properties. Um, but anyways, I'm not going to go too deeply in that hole right now. But anyways, we can save this continuation token and then the, 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 the code will finish running. And then we, what we can actually do is we can get this continuation token again, wherever we stored it. And then we can call drive app dot continue file or continue folder iterator. And then we can pass in that continuation token right here and it will pick up exactly where we left off. So uh, why is this helpful? Well, let's say again, this called, or let's say you have a, let's say you had a really big job and you were calling next dot, next dot, next dot, next on the folder iterator. And then you wanted to terminate the running of the X or you want to terminate the code uh, from running. But then later down the line, you wanted to rerun this code. You could pick up exactly where you left off based on the continuation token. So let's say that you called it once and you got the first item of the folder iterator and then you quit the code. If you called it again, or if you ran the code again, calling this method right here, you could pick up on that, that very first method again. And if you call dot next, then you'll get the very second item of the folder iterator. Again, I don't really use this too often, but just for completeness, I wanted to include it within our uh, video right here. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope the dot next and has next methods made sense, and you learned something. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you in the very next episode.